black and brown children, Baldwin suggests, experience a kind of dissonance in this regard. They grow up in a society which denies them dignity and standing, where a generalized sense of disregard characterizes the society's view of them. To develop a critical stance towards this place, this society and its views of black and brown people is in effect to risk death, Baldwin suggests. What is asked, what is demanded is a kind of consent to a host of assumptions about who you are and to the structures that give those assumptions life. As Jimmy put it, quote, it becomes thoroughly clear, at least to me, that any Negro who is born in this country and undergoes the American educational system runs the risk of becoming schizophrenic. On the one hand, he is born in the shadow of the stars and stripes, and he is assured it represents a nation which has never lost a war. He is a part of a country in which anyone can become president and so forth. But on the other hand, Baldwin writes, he is also assured by his country and his countrymen that he has never contributed anything, contributed anything to civilization, that his past is nothing more than a record of humiliations gladly endured, end quote. One of the paradoxes of education is precisely at the point when, quote, you begin to develop a conscience. You must find yourself at war with your society. It is your responsibility to change society if you think of yourself as an educated person. And on the basis of the evidence, moral and political evidence, one is compelled to say that this is a backward society, end quote. What does it mean for that child born in bed -Stuy? The child born in the Bronx, the child born in Harlem, the child born right in Staten Island, the child born in Long Island. What does it mean for the child in Queens, right? What does it mean for the child who's growing up in a world that constantly says that you aren't valued as these other children and they're doing it by way of concrete distribution of resources. You can see how some have advantages and others have di are disadvantaged. What does it mean to educate that child into believing that the world is their possession too? Baldwin goes on to say, quote, I would teach her, him that he doesn't have to be bound by the expediency, expediencies of any given administration, any given policy, any given morality, and that he or she has the right and the necessity to examine everything to question the world, to not accept what the world says about him or her. And this applies not only to students in the classroom, but to those who teach in those classrooms. Conformity stifles the soul. It shackles the imagination. You too must break loose from the assumptions and histories that overdetermine your work. You must break loose from the assumptions and histories that define how you see yourself in front of that classroom. We must have an idea of education for all of our children that will rid us of this paradox of socializing them into our ways of life that fundamentally presuppose that some people ought to be valued more than others and that they should simply resign themselves to their place 